Hello, everyone. We'll give people a few moments to log on and join us. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. We're just giving people time to join us. All right, we are going to officially get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary's Stay at Home Speaker Series. Today's program is Kekoldi, the story of the Raptor Count site within the Central American Flyway with Pablo Paras, director of the Kekoldi Hawk Watch site in Costa Rica. Bienvenidos, Pablo. Hello, it's very nice to be here. <laughs> Also joining us today is Dr. J.F. Terrien, Hawk Mountain's Senior Scientist and Graduate Studies Director. Welcome, J.F. Hola. <laughs> My name is Jamie Dawson and I'm the Director of Education at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. Thank you everyone for joining us today. As you may know, Hawk Mountain is the world's very first refuge for birds of prey. And we continue to work hard to be leaders in raptor conservation, science and education locally and globally around the world. Hawk Mountain is a private nonprofit and membership is the lifeblood of our organization. To all of our members out there, thank you so much for your continued support. It means so much to us. And if you're joining us today and you're not a member, we hope that you consider becoming one in the future. Hawk Mountain hopes that everyone remains safe and healthy during these times of COVID challenges. And we're so excited we have the opportunities to offer our local and global community a variety of free virtual programming. But as always, Hawk Mountain greatly appreciates and depends on donations. Just so everyone is aware, today's program is being recorded. The video will then be accessible on Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel as a continued resource. We also have a link on our website directly connecting you to our YouTube channel. At any time during today's program, viewers may submit their questions through the Q&A feature on the Zoom platform. And we've designated some time at the end of the program to take the questions from the audience. And we are so excited that Pablo is joining us today all the way from Costa Rica to share with us the story of the Kekolde Hawk Watch site strategically positioned within the Central American Flyway connecting both North and South America. And we're going to begin today's program by asking Pablo a few questions. So Pablo, what inspired you to become involved in the field of raptor science? Um, <clears throat> well, here in Costa Rica, we have a lot of raptor species and um, they are always around and they are very charismatic. But what really inspired me to say, this is what I want to do was to witness the raptor migration at Kekoldi. We were uh, given um, uh, some training for uh, bird identification for young locals who wish to become uh, bird guides. And uh, we were that day at the uh, Kekoldi indigenous territory uh, on a hill nearby the actual tower. And um, during lunch, we could see the raptor migration and, and we start counting it. What, what we saw that day. And uh, by the end of lunch, we were, we, we had already more than 40,000 birds counted. And that was the moment when I said, okay, this is something that I want to do. That must have been amazing to experience that. So yes. what is the favorite part of your work? Well, being in the field, like, uh, I, like identifying groups, uh, counting raptors and studying raptors definitely is is my favorite part of the of the field of the job but also at the same time working with people working with people from the Kekoli indigenous reserve working working with uh, local uh, young people that wish to to learn about raptors and working and sharing with people from all over the world Wow, amazing. Um, Pablo, can you share with our audience your personal connection to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary? Yes, um, I was a trainee in Hawk Mountain Sanctuary uh, on the spring of 2000. But then after that, uh, um, I share 
um, some work with Dr. JF. Uh, he was he wa he did some field work in Kekoldi. So I think I, I I have been blessed twice. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> um, so when did the Kekoldi Hawk Watch site actually begin? The Kekoldi Hawk Watch uh, began um, right after uh, my traineeship in Hawk Mountain. During my during my time there. Um, I could set up the, pr the protocol and I, I set up the, the profile of the project and secure the first funds to start. That's when it started. It started on the fall of 2000. Wow, amazing. Um, so who else was involved besides yourself? At the moment, I was working with a local NGO called ANAI. Um, and uh, also uh, in the field, we we brought uh, a former um, Hack Mountain um, traineeship uh, coordinator named uh, Jennifer McNichol. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the two of us plus, so, plus some volunteers and the Kekoldi people. Wow, wonderful. So what was the motivation to establish a Hawk Watch site at this particular location at Kekoldi? Hmm, well, um, at that time, it was obvious for us uh, that the numbers we could see in a, in a full season were important enough to do, uh, to do an effort to establish a site. Nice. And also, of course, to learn about raptors and to do some conservation united with local development. Yeah, and I guess we'll see it in the slides coming up. Why, I mean, the geographical region is so important and why it funnels all the bird, but I'll, I'll leave it to, up to you to show and describe it uh, in your talk. Sounds good. So you're the director of this Hawk Watch site, Pablo. So how, how do you operate? What are the general operations like at the, on a day at the count site? Well, every season that we can, um, we have a group of people. Um, a, hawk, a count site of this magnitude cannot cannot only have one lead, one uh, lead counter. It has it needs at least two, and at least four um, four assistants, because they are being every day in the tower under the sun for almost a hundred days can, can, can be a big toll on people. Uh, so, we need, so we need at least six people. And also every, what, what is every day in the tower? Uh, from 7 a.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, people go up and count and, and yes, that's, that's, it's pretty much the same as any other count sign in the world, only with a little bit more people. The counters must be very passionate. Those are long days. <laughs> they are, they are. So what are some of the biggest or most difficult challenges that Kekoldi has faced over the years? The biggest challenge Kekoldi has faced is its fin financial sustainability. Uh, Costa Rica is a country that went from being a third world country to a developing country. So a lot of um, aid agencies left the country and said, all right, uh, now you are a developing country, you should know how to raise your own money. <laughs> and, and, and that's it, that's, that's, the major, that's the major challenge, to secure funds uh, to, keep, to keep the count alive. So we were actually, I just want to mention, we were lucky this year to have generous support from, from very uh, nice persons that supported the count. And we have, and we're developing ways to make it sustainable in, in the future. So we're right now using all the new technology, the new platform, the social media, the online talks, the brochures to bring people over to see the place and feel, fell in love with the, and fall in love with the place and, and, and generate some income. So thanks to generous donors, we're, we're intending to pursue that in a sustainable way in the near future. 
Wonderful. Absolutely. We are very, very grateful. That's wonderful to have that support. Um, both uh, Pablo and JF, is there anything else that either one of you would like to add about what kind of inspired the reopening of the Kekolde site just this year after how long had it been closed? Well, um, I think the last full season count was in 2006. And for several years, we have been um, talking about it, like how to, how can we do it again? How can we develop a business model that would um, allow us to continue? And I think a big part of what happened was uh, the pandemic. The pandemic made us rethink everything that we were doing. Uh, for myself, I had to close a small business that I had and look for a job somewhere secure. And I think that was the trigger that, that said, okay, this is it. We need to do it now. We need to take advantage of, of what the, um, the end of the pan pandemic will, will bring us. And then if um, you look I'm, at, I'm sorry to, I don't want to cut you off, but if you look, if I don't want to steal the thunder from your slides coming up, but if people look at hotcount.org, looking at the numbers that are recorded in Kekoldi, you'll see that it is something else. The magnitude, the volume of flight over there makes it one of the highest count sites in the world. And in the same, the same, th same time, one of the most important plays to conduct the count. So I cannot be, I mean, I'm so thrilled to see it back on, on business. I was lucky to be there with Pablo just a, a week ago and witness it myself, but the team is so efficient and the numbers are there. So it's very, very spectacular. And, and don't worry, you're building the expectation just right. <laughs> <laughs> and what an amazing story that after 15 years of dormancy that the Kikolde site has reopened and something positive that maybe perhaps has spurred out of, you know, the tragedy of the pandemic. Um, so Pablo, before one last question before we turn it over to you and I can't wait to see the photos. Um, what unexpected surprises have you encountered throughout your experiences at Kikolde? Well, um... Costa Rica in the past decade has become, well, it was always a hotspot for birders all over the world, right. but it became a hotspot for Costa Ricans. And that was a very, very nice thing. And the first surprise is that we had the first all Costa Rican team ever to count the full season. That everybody was so thrilled to participate that we had to turn people down. They came eventually, but, but the core team uh, is, um, is all Costa Ricans. That is also, cool. yeah, also um, it was a very good surprise that the numbers were consistent with previous counts. That was, that was something that was very nice to see. And also, last but not least, it was a very nice a surprise to have JF visit us, uh, and that and that um, that gives us that that gave us a, a vote of confidence that we were doing something something good. Oh. Well, it's always a pleasure to go anyway. <laughs> Wonderful! Oh, amazing! Um, thank you for all of your wonderful responses. Pablo, we're going to turn it over to you for your presentation uh, to share a little bit more about Kekol Day and to share some of the highlights from this uh, fall 2021 raptor migration season. All right, let me, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Do you see it well? Looks great. Perfect. So welcome to the Kekoldi Hawk Watch. We are located in the Kekoldi Indigenous Territory in Costa Rica. And actually what you see on the background is, the, is what you can see from the tower every day. So let me give you a little bit of context. Where are we in, where are we in um, the Americas? What you see there is a map of the whole American continent. 
And uh, just to give you some landmarks, this is where Hawk Mountain Sanctuary is located. And this is where the Kekulde Hawk Watch is located. So as you can see, the American continent starts getting narrower as you go down into South America. And it reaches its narrowest point near Costa Rica and Panama. So I will show you now a map of Costa Rica. And I'm really sorry, it's not a very um, detailed map, but what I wanted you to see is um, the elevation of the country. Even though we have three mountain ranges, they all act as one barrier to the migrating raptors. And they go from the northwest part of the country all the way down to the southeast part of the country and even into Panama. So they, like I said, they act as this barrier for the migrating raptors who then use the flatlands between these mountain ranges and the Caribbean Sea to fly through the country using more or less these flyways. So that creates almost a perfect bottleneck. And where is Kekulde located in this bottleneck? It's right here. And this bottleneck has um, around five kilometers between the coast and the nearest mountains. So let me show you the site. We have a what we call the scientific center. It's our operational headquarters. It's a, it's a building one kilometer into the mountain. It's a very basic setup. It's uh, all, all made from local wood. Um, it's a two-story building with everything everybody needs, room, bathrooms, um, and of course, kitchen, where we share all our meals together. And let me show you the very famous uh, counting team of the fall 2021. On the bottom, it, it, it is myself and my co-director, David Araya. Uh, on, on the left, it's uh, Sebastian Hernandez. He is the local indigenous leader that makes all this work like a clock. And behind us, it's the, it's the team plus this guy over here. Apart from the scientific center, we have the tower. The tower, it's more or less 200 meters away from the scientific center. It's a 10 meter wood, uh, tower made of wood, local hardwood. And that's where um, the counters spend um, almost a hundred years every fall counting. And as you can see, they have a very, depending on how well we give maintenance to the, the, the surrounding trees, they can have from 180 degrees or more um, view from of the coast and the mountains on the inside of the country. These are pictures of um, this year's counting team and a visitor. So let's um, talk a, a little bit about um, the species we see. We count at least 19 species of migratory raptors. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the most um, common ones and the ones that we think are of, of importance. First, the swallowtail kite. The swallowtail kite is one of the earliest migrants. Sometimes uh, we see them flying by at the end of July. But as you can see in the graph down here, between the end of August and the beginning of September, that's when uh, they, the, mo the most numbers pass by. This year so far, 
we have counted uh, 4,034 birds. Those, these two pictures are from the tower. <clears throat> now let's talk about Mississippi kites and plumbius kites. Those are also um, early birds. And as you can see, Mississippi kites uh, have their peak of passage in mid-September. And plumbeus kites, this picture on the right is a very beautiful uh, juvenile plumbeus kites. You can, you can see it, you can identify it from the color, the very nice orange color of the talons and the seer. And they, uh, the peak of their migration is more or less between August and September. This year, we have uh, counted so far uh, more than 350,000 uh, Mississippi kites and around 654 plumbeus kites. We count osprey. Um, to this day, we have counted more than 1,000 ospreys and they don't have like a peak as you can see on the graph below, they have they are very consistent during the whole season. But like all the other birds, between September and October is where we can see the most. The falcons. <clears throat> we at some point uh, during the first counts we were the site where we could count uh, the most peregrine, peregrine falcons in the world. Now there is a site in the Florida Keys that count more than us, but that's, um, you know, it gives us a very good um, expectation on what, what to look for in our season. Peregrine falcons have uh, their peak passage um, during the mid, uh, during mid October. What is nice about Kekoldi and peregrine falcons, like if you like peregrine falcons and, and if you like to see, let's say, 15 peregrine falcons in a vortex, in a thermal, then come to Kekoldi. This year we have counted 2, 000, more than 2,600 peregrine falcons. Now, turkey vulture. Turkey vulture is the species of which we count the most. So far this season, we have counted more than 1,150,000 turkey vultures. Their peak migration uh, is the last two weeks of October. They come by the thousands. Our biggest uh, count overall in all species during this season was um, almost 120,000 birds counted in one day. Broadwing hawk, it's a um, bird that you are very familiar with. Also, that's the second highest number of birds we count in every season. This season we, have, we counted uh, up to this point more than 850,000. And they make this beautiful, um, vortexes in thermals. Again, uh, like the like the turkey vulture, uh, the broadwing hawk uh, peak of migration is in the middle of October towards the beginning of of November. The the third um, big beauty that we count uh, is um, Swenson's hawk. This season we have counted more than 250,000 birds. And like uh, the turkey vultures and the broadwing hawks, they have uh, the peak of the migration between October and November. They, they peak a little bit later than turkey vultures and broadwing hawks. We see every single morph of Swenson's hawk in the in the site 
And this is uh, what um, JF was telling you about. This is the summary of the um, count so far. Right now in KKLD, from a single count site, we have counted more than 2,600,000 birds. Um, and as you can see, uh, the main species, the species that are more than 90% of the count are the turkey vulture, the broadwing hawk, and the Swenson's hawk. And some other species that are very important are is the Mississippi kite. We count also um, hook-billed kites. We count northern harriers, sharpshin hawks, cooper hawks, gray hawk, um, and other species, also merlins and American kestrels, but in very, very low numbers. All right, so this is about the count. I'm going to show you a little about the local species that you can see from the tower. These, these three guys you can see every day from the tower. On the left, uh, it's a very, very beautiful laughing falcon. In the middle, the king vulture, and on the right, the, uh, the black hawk eagle. Other goodies that you can see in, from the tower during migrating season, pretty much every single migratory bird, except uh, shorebirds, all your favorite warblers. Uh, but these guys that uh, you can see here are locals. Killbill toucan, uh, toddy flycatcher, um, blue black grosbeak, male and female. These two guys are mannequins. They are very, very famous for the, um, for what it's called the legs, which is this dance that the males do to attract the females. This is a, one of the night specialties, the crested owl. And this is a snowy cotinga. And to give you a, a, just a glance of the rest of the local, fauna uh, from the in the tower on the forest you can see sloth we have three species of monkeys and a, a lot of species of snakes and frogs lizards pretty much we have a little bit for everybody's taste and that that will be it um, all i can say now is weste weste is the word um, for thank you in the in brivri. Brivri is the language of the locals, the language of the Kekudi. Um, that's our website and that's my contact, just in case you want to write or find more information. And of course, you can uh, ask uh, Jamie and JF uh, for any other information you would like to know about, about us. Thank you so much. Pablo, that was amazing. It's so beautiful. Uh, just in all of the numbers of birds you are seeing, that's amazing. Um, I would like to start off with a question, if I may. Um, if Please. people watching are interested in supporting the Kekolde Hawkwatch site, are they able to make donations through your website or how, how can they support you? Um, we are we are setting that up. I think that at this very moment, what they can do is get in touch with with you guys and and JF. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've been uh, on Hawk Mountain. You could uh, reach out to me, and and we can uh, have it directed to the Kikoldi Hawk Watch. If anyone here is not convinced to go and pay a visit to the count in Kikoldi, I mean those numbers are amazing, and all the other things you see. One thing I would like you to comment on, Pablo, I know you know some of the um, culture and folklore or legend that the indigenous people have with the migrating raptors. I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that and, and just uh, update us on how the local perceive raptor migration. Yeah, uh, that was something that I, I that, that's something that is very, uh, it's a very nice um, point about the 
how we started Kekoldi. Uh, a lot of hog watches, uh, unfortunately, started because of uh, people hunting. And for us, it was because of the relationship some of the locals had with migratory raptors and local raptors. In the Bribri culture, um, there are two stories that relate to raptors. One is called the Sorbonne. The Sorbonne is a dance the men and the women of a, of a local tribe do. And they create two, two circles. On one of the circles is the male and they are moving on, like to one side and the other circle is the female and they are moving on the other side. And that create, that uh, simulates a, a thermal, a vortex in a thermal. And then there is a singer who is singing as the king vulture. So the king vulture rises above the rest of the, of the people and look for a better place to go and live. Okay, I'm, I'm giving you the very simplified uh, uh, story. Then there is the, 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 um, the relationship between the locals and the migratory raptors is that they believe that the migrants are people, entities from somewhere else. And what they do is they visit once a year and bring new seeds for the rest of the year. So it's, it's a very beautiful story. So basically it's, it's celebrated. It's, it's something that they appreciate and they're looking forward to the next season, right? Every single year. Yeah, the biggest crop uh, that the indigenous people produce is cocoa. So that's also part of it. That's, uh, you know, they bring new seeds of cocoa and other seeds for the well being of the people for the rest of the year. Very, very interesting. Thank you. I know there's, there's a lot more uh, legends and stories, but uh, I mean, people can, can learn and, and talk with you afterwards. But thanks, thanks for sharing. One question from the audience was uh, why are we seeing some species in lower numbers? I'm thinking like Cooper's hawks. Uh, American kestrels compare to some of the other species, which, I mean, get to hundreds of thousands of birds. I, I can let you answer this one. Well, um, one of the reasons is uh, the wintering grounds of these species. Um, they, can, they can start um, their winter territory in Northern or mid Central America. But there is also another another reason, and it's that they don't need um, thermals to fly. Um, American kestrels are falcons, and they are power flyers, and they can migrate through the rest of the country. As also Cooper hawks and 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 sharpshinned hawks. I mean, some of them, I, th I think, as well, like the broadwing hawks, that actually go for South America, the osprey being the same, peregrine falcon, mm -hmm. on the other end, some of those species, some other species will stop further yes. north and they don't need or they don't cross the whole Central American corridor to reach uh, South America. But this is very amazing to see. And it's just like I, I, I've been thinking, it is so great to have this piece of the puzzle back mm -hmm. into in, the whole picture to see those numbers for all those different species and how they all differ, but and, and keep track of that over time. So it's so important to have the Kikoldi back on track. So I'm super pumped about that. Another question from the audience was, um, what, what are the efforts that um, we and you do to involve uh, young folks from Kikoldi to, uh, to work and to learn about birds and to work with the count? Yes, during the first years, there were always at least two young people from Kekoldi as, uh, as part of the counting team. This year, we had a little bit of difficult finding one, but now we have um, two that came to us uh, saying, oh, I didn't know that you started counting again. Uh, how can I do it? 
and they are already signed for next year. I think I think as well we were um, lucky to go to a local school that has a lot of indigenous kids, and as soon as we start talking with them, they didn't want to stop and go back to the classroom. They want to keep keep looking at birds and use the binoculars. So some of them were very into it and knew already the name of the species. And so I feel there's going to be, with the count being back on track, there's going to be a lot of, of, of people getting involved and interested about it uh, just by having it running. So I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to involve a lot of folks in the coming years for sure. Yes, you are absolutely correct. And this is this is a school that has been growing in population, in, in, in student population over the years. So we already are in conversations with the director to hopefully make a, a permanent uh, environmental education program there, not only for the each count, but hopefully to, to have something going on all year round. Very good point. Um, also, we, we wanted to mention that one of the source of revenue that or way to, to, to sustain the count will be to bring people, birding groups, birding tour to visit the count. One such trip might be actually with uh, us at Hawk Mountain that we, uh, we want to put together a nice birding tour in Costa Rica that would involve spending some time at the tower because the place is so spectacular. So if anyone's interested, you can reach out to me or Jamie or Pablo or, or look on the website uh, for more information. Yes. Jamie, you're muted. You're muted. Trying to. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just wanted to add a comment uh, to the response for the question about what work is being done with, the, the, with youth to get them involved to be in the conservation work and to be future leaders. So. Um, when JF uh, was recently down in Costa Rica, um, he did bring down with him a lot of educational materials that uh, we use working with students at Hawk Mountain, uh, silhouettes, binoculars, um, things like that. So to kind of share those resources and we do have some materials in Spanish as well, um, digitally. So um, it's, it's nice and I, from what I heard, they were already being used enthusiastically, so. Yes, yes, uh, and this this group that we went to with uh, JF uh, as soon as as the as one of the counters ha, um, held up the silhouette of an osprey and and one guy in the corner said I I know that one, fishing eagle. <laughs> yeah, very very uh, bright kids. It was fun to do and and very rewarding. So we're looking forward for more of those opportunities in the future. It's very exciting. Um, if there's any other question, I don't see any other questions in the chat. If um, you have a, a comment or question, Jamie, on your side, I think I think that's that's pretty much it. Wonderful. Well, um, Pablo, we can't thank you enough for sharing um, a glimpse of Kekolde. It looks beautiful. The birds are amazing, and thank you so much for the very important work you are doing. Um, to count these birds and for, for raptor conservation. So thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you to our audience for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to share this space with us. And I always like to end these programs with some upcoming uh, programs and events we have at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. We are still uh, in our uh, fall migration. Today was a decent flight day. There were some really interesting birds going through. Um, so throughout, um, Throughout the end of November, we will have live Raptor, Raptors Up Close programs free on the weekend. So come check that out. Um, if after Thanksgiving on a Black Friday, you don't want to go shopping, you want to go hiking with us at Hawk Mountain. So we have our opt outside hike um, on uh, Friday the 26th. And on uh, November 28th, you might want to do some stretching after eating for Thanksgiving. So we have yoga on the mountain. December 1st, we have our We Ones Walk, Animals in Winter program. December 2nd, we have our last stay-at-home speaker series of the year, and that is Solid Air, Invisible Killer, Saving Billions of Birds from Windows. On December 4th, we have a talent talk featuring some of our live Raptor educators. December 12th, we have our ugly holiday sweater hike, which is, that's going to be a fun one. 
And December 15th, we have Homeschool Happenings Winter Solstice. So we hope to see you on the mountain. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for your support and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.